Hello everyone, my name is Bree and welcome to Documented Journey. So today's video is a collab video. April from Moonlight Cabin and I have kind of partnered up and we are going to show you our favorite five journaling products. Now, with that being said, um, I want to talk about April for a moment. She is fantastic. Have you guys ever seen her journal spreads? They are amazing. I absolutely love her. I love her style. She has such a laid back personality and I'm drawn to that. Um, and we have very similar styles. We, we do a lot of drawing and, um, kind of like um, our layouts, you know, not necessarily looking like a Project Life layout, but um, they still are layouts and they have drawing aspects to them as well as photos and things like that. Anyway, um, if you like my kind of stuff, I'm sure you're going to like her as well. She has a more realistic style than I do. Mine's more illustrated, but Needless to say, if you like any kind of journaling, you will like her channel. I will link everything in the description box for you. She is amazing. Okay, so let's get into my five things. Now, I'm going to go ahead and assume we already have a notebook, but um, I'm, I'm debating on if I'm going to include this or not. But anyway, my notebook is this is a speckled fawn uh, Speckled Fawn's Huggable Leather. Now it was a traveler's notebook and I have turned it into a folio. All right. And I am going to be 100% honest with you. I did not like it when it was a traveler's mo notebook because it was so flimsy. Um, when it says huggable, <laughs> it's huggable. And um, I like that leather, but I realize I love that leather. I love this feel compared to something that's more sturdy, let's just say like a Mr. Darcy, that is more of a, like it's pliable, but it's still very sturdy. Um, I would say that I'm more drawn to something like this, but not in the traveler's notebook form. So what I've done here is I've actually made my own notebook. Um, I'll take it out for you so you can kind of see. I've decorated the cover. These notebooks are being sold in my shop, um, and they are not only Strathmore mixed media paper, which is this right here, but I'm also including Tomo River paper in them as well. Um, I have included some vellum sheets in mine. This was the first one that I actually did. This was my prototype. This is what the cover looks like, so you can kind of see it. But um, I do not, this is not how I do them in the shop. Here I've done it where it was like section by section. I have a lot of stuff in here, but like I have a section of Tomo River paper and it's a thick chunk of Tomo River paper. A section of mixed media paper and then a section of Tomo River paper. And I have opted not to do that because I'm not a huge fan of it when I'm journaling. What I've done for you guys is I've done two pieces of uh, mixed media, two Tomo River, two mixed media, two Tomo River. So you don't get too stuck on like one paper. And I really like the flip flop of the pages. It's almost like my style of a junk journal. So anyway, um, I'm going to act like we already have our notebook. So I would say my very first thing that I could not live without, like if it was just my notebook and a journal, uh, I mean, <laughs> if it was just my notebook and a pen, it would be this. This is the Pilot Vanishing Point. Um, and I have it in a medium nib. I like the medium nib. Um, the fine is just too fine for me. I like some some bulk to my letter, but um, and I like to watch the ink kind of like flow. When I feel like there's a fine tip, you can't watch that ink flow. You don't see the gradation in the ink as much in every single letter, and that's getting technical, but but honestly, that's how it is. So in here, I have Lexington Gray ink. I love that ink. Um, so that would be my combo, and I'm gonna actually say that Lexington Gray and and this uh, Pilot Fountain Pen is one. <laughs> so that way it's not so hard for me. So that's one. My other thing would probably be my mild liners. Now I do my planning inside my journal. I do this because I think that um, it's really nice to look at what happened during the day and then read about it. I find some patterns that way and that's kind of why I do it. So if you hear some movement in the background, my daughter's here as well. 
you might see her fingers or her snotty hands. She's got a double ear infection again, so we're working through it. Anyway, these are all the colors that I have. I went ahead and purchased the like non-bright ones. They're all the dull ones. This week is brown, so uh, that would be number two, would be my mild liners. Okay. Sure, you can hold this, but you cannot play with them, okay? So that's number two. Number three would be my watercolors. Um, I use Daniel Smith, and I use the tubes, and I refill my half pans. Um, or sometimes my full pans. Uh, I love this palette. This is my like, this is my ultimate palette. <laughs> I have what I call my desk palette, which is my Schminka, and I like them. I, uh, I do enjoy, like, there are certain things I like better of my Schminkas than my Daniel Smith. Like, I love yellow ochre in Schminka, um, way better than the yellow ochre in Daniel Smith, but you get the point. So this is my desk palette. It's a mix of Schminka and Daniel Smith. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably just go ahead and go with Daniel Smith. If I had to pick one um, brand, I should say. Um, so Daniel Smith, that is my third thing. So my fourth thing would probably be br a brush. Um, and... I have a love for these two specific brand of brushes. Um, I really don't want to have to decide on one, but if I had to, I will, and I will explain <laughs> my reasoning, I guess, in the end. But so silver black brushes have a uh, like a soft spot in my heart. I absolutely love them. I love the whole travel aspect to them. Um, this one I just recently. Uh, got for Christmas and it's an actual like regular pen not a or pen regular brush not a travel brush and then I also have this which is a Sakura or open this. sure which is a Sakura water brush and um, I really really love these these are my favorite water brushes of all times I will not use anything else actually this specific brush right here was the very first one I bought probably 10 years ago and I still use it now it does not have as fine of a tip as a newer one like you can tell the difference between the tips um, but I think it's useful because if I wanted to do a background I could just splash some color down with this thicker one and not have to worry about it and this thin one um, I use for like you know intricate details so I find them both useful if I had to pick one, one specific brush, and I, I couldn't have anything else, I would choose a black velvet, and I would choose a four round. I feel like um, that I could get in little bitty fine details if I needed to, or I could get some washes um, with this specific size. and considering I use a B6 size for my journal and the size of like what I usually make my illustrations and everything like that. So if I had to, <laughs> which is really hard, I would pick a size four um, black velvet travel brush. Um, you know, you can get water anywhere, but um, yeah, I don't want to have to though. I like both of those, <laughs> I like both sets of brushes really a lot. So that would be my number four. And my number five is some kind of portable printer. Now, I'm not a, a huge um, advocate for like buying a Polaroid zip per se. Um, I bought this because I got a really, really good deal on it. Um, but I hear the HP Sprocket is a hint better. So, um, you know, if this one happens to wear out on me, then I might think about purchasing something like that in the near future. But, um, I love my portable printer. I have a selfie and I prefer this over that now, many reasons, but I can get two photos on one piece of three by two paper um, as opposed to having to print six with my selfie. So this is just more like a day in day out printer that I can print things on, print pictures of the kids, slap them in my journal, you know. Um, so this would be number five. I'm going to throw in number six because um, it is something that I use a lot of and I would probably 
pick this next, which is like scrap paper um, or and or washi tape. Can I do that? Can that be? Uh, probably not. But um, this container maybe is what I should say, uh, or this pouch. Um, so when I lay my photos down in my journal, I'll show you. For instance, here I laid a photo down and I have washi behind it. Um, I like that and then also I sometimes lay photos down and have like pieces of paper behind it just scrap paper um, Either one I think is really cool I like the cluster aspect of it and I use a bunch of scraps like just scrap paper that um, Yeah, it comes out doesn't it? Yeah, yeah here let me blue does. Yeah, the blue does yeah, let's put it back in Okay, it's okay though oh. You okay? Okay. Um, so anyway, I just get like scraps of paper that I have that have been left um, from Project Life or whatever, or even uh, you know something like this, which is ledger paper. Um, I've also, when I go to the grocery store, I cut up the brown bags and I reuse them. Here's a little piece of that. Um, I trim them down enough so that way I can stick them in my journal. There's just, I just love scraps of paper. Um, when I actually make my Tomo River paper journals, you guys, it's getting ridiculous because I have just scraps upon scraps of this Tomo River paper, this size, that I have no idea what to do with. I just have yeah, just tons of it. So if anyone has any ideas of what I could do with it, or if anyone might want some, you should definitely message me or leave a comment in the just in the comment section below so I have like an idea of what to do with this kind of stuff because what I do do is I do cut it up in this into squares about like this or I cut it into sections that big and I I can draw out the the weather or like if they're this big I do like little um, illustrations of people or little mountain scenes and then I glue end up gluing them into my journal but I mean you can only use so much and I have like this is just not even guys this is nothing compared to actually the stack of it that I have so anyway I would say number 6.5, if you can have that 6 and 6.5 or whatever, is this pouch of like just, it's sample washi and um, scrap paper and kind of stuff like that. So anyway, set all this stuff back in. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. I think it's always fun to see like people's go-to supplies. For me, I feel like it's kind of obvious what I use, but you know, if you're someone that has not um, seen my videos very much, then I understand that uh, it might not be as obvious to you. So that's why I thought I'd share. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. What are your favorite five supplies? Um, I'd love to know. Uh, leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, everybody, see ya.